Today I thought I'd show you the parts and the operation of a Millis Falls boring machine. We know it's a Millis Falls boring machine because the manufacturer has stamped Millis Falls on the frame. When I carry a Miller's Falls boring machine, I like to keep my thumb around the latch that holds the carriage so it won't drop accidentally. And then I grip the seat, and it's very easy to carry and place on your timber ready to bore. Miller's Falls boring machine has rods for uprights and another pair of rods for diagonals. This makes the top very rigid and accurate. The handles are adjustable and can be made longer or shorter for boring hardwood or softwood. Using a small adjustable wrench, I have loosened the bracket nut and I have extended the handle to the full length for boring a hardwood block. On this rod of the tower is a depth stop, which is adjustable to limit the travel of the carriage down the, the rail. And that will limit the depth of your mortise hole. Using a screwdriver, an adjustable wrench, and my folding ruler, I have set the depth stop to bore a hole approximately four inches deep. Now that everything's all set, I'm going to bore a, a hole with a two, standard two-inch auger bit into this block of oak. I'm demonstrating this machine for my friend Reggie from Athens, Georgia. This oak is tough, but this is putting the machine to maximum. <laughs> Reggie wanted to know if it could withstand the torque of a two-inch bit. I say it's doing fine. I don't know if I can stand the torque of a two inch bit. Oh boy. In oak. Well, I didn't make it to the bottom. I'm going to reverse one full turn Engage the lift gear and pull a bit out.
Every boring machine has a mechanism for pulling the bit out of the timber. With this one you flip the lever, turn the handles forward, and the gears match into the dog and pulls the bit out. After you do one full turn in reverse. Once it's at the top position, you slide the gear over and the trigger holds it open so you're freewheeling to bore a hole.